Uh, hi guys. Uh, I had one more video I needed to uh, to make, and it's regards to the Jupiter Venus uh, conjunction uh, alignment, which is a very rare occurrence. At this time, it um, this uh, occurrence uh, happens every well. I'm going to get into this. Actually, the last one that had occurred uh, in regards to this was at the time of Jesus' birth. Now, I've got a, a page here. I found two pages because when I was researching this on uh, uh, at the time when Jesus uh, came in the flesh uh, the first time um, at the time of his birth, um, okay, there's some conflicts on actually about a year apart. It's just like a year difference. It's no big, really, no big deal. But also, there's a difference between the month, you know, that if he was uh, supposedly born. Now, this page here is the um, historical calendar of Jesus, and it tells about the history of um, of our Lord's birth ministry. Uh, crucifixion and resurrection, and uh, and the dates, the, the calendar dates that uh, coincide uh, with with the events. And this is an interesting page because uh, it has um, what well, lists to the right hand side the uh, the important events uh, that occurred during that time since. Um, the so well, the first event that happened was uh, Ezra had left uh, Babylon with uh, Xerxes. He's he was the uh, um, the ruler at that time, the king at that time. Uh, he left with his decree to restore the Levitical rule and the people of Jerusalem, and that was back in 457 B.C. Uh, in the first Nisan uh, of uh, that month of the Jewish year 3304 okay and uh, and then the the next one that September uh, during the first Tishri okay uh, Ezra observed his first Rosh Hashanah on first of Tishri, the day of trumpets, which is the the new year in, in Jerusalem at that time, and that was in 457, same year, 457. Uh, and then it was uh, was it over 500, sorry, four 500 years later or so in at the time of uh, 4 B.C. Uh, the Archangel Gabriel appears to Zechariah and announces the uh, the coming of John the Baptist in the uh, following year uh, on the March the 17th, 3 BC, John the Baptist was born. And then um, following thereafter, Jesus was born. But they have their have his birth date as August the 12th, 3 BC, as being born on the first of Elil, and uh, and then following that, Jesus was visited by the wise men, the Magi, on uh, June the seventeenth, two B.C. So that was like like not quite a year uh, later. From uh, I guess you said from April, um, August to June. Uh, okay, that's about, that's a little less than a year, but anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, it says that Jesus was born before sunrise on the first Elil, Elil um, which was in August of 3758, which was on a Monday, August the 12th, 3 BC. Now, it said that during this time, this there was a Jupiter-Venus conjunction in Leo, um, 
was four to two Ar arc minutes in separation and the wise men the magi saw jesus a star as it was raising in the east thus their own witness to this conjun conjunction near the king star regulus which is in leo was uh, uh, judicially uh, construed as the Messiah's true date and approximate time of birth. And Jesus was late, uh, later visited by the Magi on the eve of the 16th of Tammuz, 3759, uh, see Matthew 2, 1 through 12, which was Tuesday evening on June the 17th of 2 BC. And Jesus was ten and a half months old at the time. That's what I was uh, trying to figure out. Okay, that was less than a year. <laughs> um, and then the, the Jupiter-Venus uh, conjunction in Leo was six arc seconds from the uh, concentricity uh, when Venus is so. Uh, sufficiently aligned f from the sun. Okay, it was aligned from the sun, and the sky is crystal clear. Ven Venus can barely be seen with the naked eye in broad daylight. And this dazzling uh, conjunction was significantly brighter than Venus alone, which was certainly visible in broad daylight in the clear, clear blue sky. Okay. Uh, I want to uh, move on to another article because I ha do have a lot in regards to this amazing phenomena that a very rare occurrence. Okay, this is the other page that I'm going to link to just real quick because it um, uh, it has different dates on it. So just you know, if anyone is wanting to study further about the, uh, it's about like the feast feast days that is surrounding the birth of Jesus and uh, the star of Bethlehem theory. Uh, I'll just leave this page. And uh, because uh, this is from the, uh, I'm not sure where this is from, okay, National Geographic, searching for the star of Bethlehem. Okay, this also has um, a picture to showing the alignment at the time that they were saying um, that the Jupiter and Venus presumably occurred on June the 17th, 2 BC. Okay. So, so you say that there's a, there's a difference between just one year. Uh, okay. Because um, that's just what I'm just, you know, just trying to bring up here, uh, actually, where it pinpoints. The, but the most important thing is. Uh, is that these uh, two heavenly bodies in the sky, you know, God's creation, he, he put these in the sky for signs, uh, as for Jesus to uh, uh, conquer over Satan. Uh, and what is happening this year, the same conjunction, is the sign that, um, well, the first is, is that our G, our Lord Jesus came in the flesh the first time so he's going to come back the same way in the flesh and this is these two are the sign of his return yeah and that's all I wanted to say there uh, so I'm just going to leave links to everything um, to this article and I see there was something else here I, okay what well, uh, they have here and it was in regards to the uh, conjunction with the moon and uh, well let's see where to start here it says that Jupiter was uh, a Hebrew name was uh, Zedek which meant righteousness and so Jupiter is a sign of the king of righteousness or the righteous ruler which is Jesus and it was recognized as a Masonic star then and it and it uh, was on the head of the constellation Cetus 
it's a C-E-T-U-S, the serpent, which symbolizes Satan, and Venus. Venus is uh, symbolic as of the virgin, and the virgin who gave birth to the Son of God, as well as being a symbolic of the church, uh, was in the ribbon that connects the two fishes of the constellation Pisces and Moon was at the mouth of the ram uh, Aries, uh, the constellation. And uh, it says the truth is that the sign does represent evil in its entirety. He is the enemy of our soul, Satan, and all the influence Satan evokes in the world. Cetus is the biggest constellation. Okay, got that one. And okay, we have to remember in Genesis 3:15 that God gives a prophetic message to Eve in the Garden of Eden. He tells her that her seed, which is Jesus Christ, will crush the head and the seed of the snake, which is Satan. While the seed of the uh, snake will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman which is Jesus and we finally see this prophecy fulfilled in Cetus which is the, the serpent uh, constellation and this star sign represents the time when Jesus will return to take his place as ruler of this world and evil will ultimately be defeated for good Amen uh, Cetus is a three-natured beast. His uh, a fish tail, a reptile head, and a mammal's paws. And these three examples rep represent three sources of imprisonment of sin. The fish represents the world. The mammal represents the flesh, and the reptile re represents the devil. And these three areas in which the church will struggle as long as they are connected to this world is the monster. Um, the Aries has broken uh, the band and the uh, church is the beautiful Cespathia uh, enthroned in heaven. That's another constellation, by the way. And partaking of the marriage feast. The three areas of our enslavement are being uh, defeated in the sign. Look closely. First, a river of God's wrath is scorching the paws, the flesh. Next, Aries is pressing down on top of the head and the neck, the devil and the world. And finally, towards the bull is trampling down on its head, the devil. And this picture completes the defeat of Satan. Uh, it says the gospel truth is that remember the Aries and they're talking about the heavenly bodies they're the constellations the Aries and all his decants represents the fulfillment of God's promises to his believers and Cetus which is the serpent represents the com uh, completion of that original seed prophecy here is the, the seed of Satan receiving the crushing bruise to the head from Aries was the triumphant lamb that was slain who is trampling this sea monster under its feet with the same forepaws that are severing the band, the band that binds the fish Pisces. The river of light that issues from Orion's foot is flowing directly into the monster who is desperately trying to stop it with its forepaws. And finally the bands that have been his only source of power and influence in the believer's life are being cut. This is a vivid picture of the rapture and its double edged effect. The escape of the church and the judgment of the enemy. Well, I'm at the end really. I was going to make a comment but I'll do it in part two because I think I'm going to run over this. Okay, I hope to see you there, guys, uh, for the exciting conclusion, okay? Okay, see you in part two. Bye.